Good morning, everyone. This is a historic event because it is a combined podcast of... Of Read Between the Lines, sorry, I wasn't ready. And The Reason <laughs> for Now by Dr. Theo. And this is my good friend, Alexi. Esteemed. Esteemed friend, yes. And I asked Alexi at the beginning of this week what he would like to talk about, and he mm. suggested responsibility. Mm. And I did a bit of reading around it and research and listening to a couple of lectures, and it occurred to me that responsibility is key to uh, one of the reasons that society is falling apart. And there are many different uh, words for this. So one reason it's falling apart is political correctness. The other reason it's falling apart is globalization. The other reason it's mm -hmm. falling apart is uh, mass communication, social media, man manipulation thereof. Um, and then there are the nuances and the, what we really, really need to understand uh, about how progress actually happens on an individual basis and on a societal basis. Uh, I would like to add to to that. I think I was um, I was looking at uh, my situation at work and uh, linking to what you call uh, not political correctness per se, but more political awareness. So you need to, in order to survive, you need to be sure that you are, you know, what position you hold in the organisation, how far you can go, who is your paymaster. Generally, it's your it's your immediate boss how the dynamics work out so you know how far you can push, what you can do, what you can say, what you can't say. And in the organization I work in, it's very much, uh, there's a lot of emphasis on responsibility, which is unusual to a lot of the other companies I work for most. Because nowadays, so many people are scared to, let's, let's call it execute in terms of using your being responsible and then executing on it and being allowed to do it because the political, the PC part, uh, the political correctness, uh, the, being politically correct, sorry, and also playing the political game in order to survive means that you do, very few are confident enough, let's say have less to lose or are not confident in their own skin to be able to sort of give that feedback or be a bit more courageous in voicing your opinion still and intelligently not just willy-nilly and then not being worried about potential consequences most people will keep their head below the parapet because it's their way of surviving but what I've found when I've spoken to a few of my colleagues and I'm not saying it's not a criticism but when I have a certain opinion on something and they go oh yeah well, thank you for speaking up Alexi I didn't want to because I want to keep my job because I didn't want to be seen as a the black sheep because I'm scared that it might actually have repercussions and then suddenly all the lights mm. are on me and suddenly I'm now being looked at in the wrong way. And it's a lot to do with okay. perception. So, so yeah. let, let's distill that down yeah. further. So what you described is a significant element of fear. Yeah. Yes. And fear is actually from punishment. Punishment comes from something that you've done and you have a consequence based on your action in the past mm. and that is fault okay mm. now yeah. the reason that this is happening is because if you think about it in evolutionary terms you see there's, there's only two pillars of human behavior uh and i'm only i'll touch on them very briefly the first pillar of human behavior is reflex anxiety reduction so we all have a baseline level of arousal that we reflexly reduce because that's the quickest way of surviving in terms of escaping predators, getting a basic need of survival. Mm. Now, reflex anxiety reduces by definition do not think. Okay, Humans do not think. In fact, the Daniel Kahneman, the, uh, the first Nobel Prize winner for psychology, in fact, it wasn't mm. for psychology, it was for behavioral economics, he said 98% of everything we do is emotional, no matter how intelligent you are. Maybe if you're super intelligent, a tiny bit more is less emotional. In an emotional state, there is zero logic. Think about that for a moment. So, so if you have a group of reflex anxiety reducers living together, there'll be chaos. But because we're tribal, because nature worked out, they're living in the, as a tribe, made it more likely you'll survive, then we are hardwired to respond to structure, hierarchy, and leadership. 
It also means that we are hardwired to seek those who are most similar to us. Because if we see something we are not familiar with, then it means we're not sure whether it's safe. We're not sure that it's not going to eat us. If we see something that's familiar, it means that we saw it before and it probably didn't eat us. We don't like things that are different. Therefore, if someone is different, then the crowd narrative will result on expulsion of that person which is different. And that is called scapegoating. Can I add something that we didn't warm up before when we were having a lovely coffee together until a few minutes ago? And this, uh, go with, you know, give, give me a couple of minutes because I, it, it's a little little light bulb that came on, but I'm not sure if it's going to make that much sense. What I'm realizing is if in the world we live in, where we are now all scared to voice an opinion because of the repercussions that may, you know, in terms of your position, in terms of uh, uh, being, um, uh, having a, a claim against you with HR because you've, uh, you've commented on somebody's looks, which you should never do. In fact, there's not much you can say or can do. However, bear with me. Communi- Why can't you comment on someone's looks? Come on, bear with me. Communication. If you have average communication skills, then your ability to seek out the boundaries is is far, far reduced. So what I mean by that is, if you are not aware of a reasonable level of human psychology, the who fits where, the dynamics, the political game, the repercussions, how far you can go, and so on and so forth, then what will happen is that you you will be more conservative. You will, you will be safer. So that you'll say less just because you're not sure what you can say and how far you can go. So what that means is that will then stifle your enjoyment. It will stifle your, your ability to be a bigger influencer, to maybe to go further, to be more, in inverted commas, successful. Because your emotional intelligence ver- via, via being a good communicator is not as... Um, intelligent or not as sophisticated as it should be so for example if you have a boss um, and you get on then my argument to that is in order to take responsibility for what you're doing you need to understand what he wants what he likes and what he dislikes because that will give you then more room and more space to know how far you can go and those boundaries could be a lot further than you think because he'll basically say oh no don't bother me with this just get on with it hallelujah tick move on but if you do not even have that way of thinking and have that ability to go, if I work him out, him or her out, and see what he likes, dislikes, how far I can go, what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable, what's wrong, what's right, what he wants to know about, what he doesn't care about, then you know what? I will have to, I think your level of being able, your level of conformity is actually increased because you have to play safe. You're not sure. So you're basically waiting for the orders and the instructions and you just follow as a good soldier. And, and I, think, I think that's a lot to do with... A robot. A robot. And that's basically a lot to do with... And then you have l- less responsibility in inverted commas because you choose to keep your head far, far, or even, even further below the parapet rather than saying, hang on a minute, no, I'm still a human being. I've still got a personality here. Mm-hmm. You've hired me for a reason. You've hired me for my experience and for who I am, right. not for just conforming and following orders. Or not... And I think that's, that's what I'm no longer sure about anymore, if well, I'm honest. You, the, so the, what's interesting is, is uh, once we hit that term robot. Yes. Because um, the larger you become as an entity, as a, as a corporate entity, yes. the, the, the more manualized you want everything to be. Because the, the, the large corporations who are multinational, let's say, mm. uh, and, and we know it, you know, the reason we go to McDonald's is because you know you're going to get a burger of a certain standard wherever you are, whether you're in China, whether you're in London, whether you're in Athens, okay. Italy. Can I, can I throw one at you about go the on. taking responsibility for your diet? Mm-hmm. Going to McDonald's, a lot of us do. I go to McDonald's because uh, from an ex-caterer point of view, I know that what the product they have is uniform, it's standardized, it's of good quality. They've got very, very... Uh, no, I do, I've worked in them. Right. Believe me, 
in versus taking the chance of going by a motorway service station and taking your chance and your luck with them. Trust me with my experience. Better than, okay. They are right. at, at a consistent level that you know what you're getting, you know how it's done, the cleanliness levels, the KPIs. I've, I've, I've read the manual. But, but, but then you've got the dietary part and you know, unless you're completely dim, you know what it's doing to, to you in terms of fats, in terms of the right. addictive chemicals that are in all the sources so that make you want to more. Let's focus a little bit yeah. more on, on uh, this issue yeah. of the multinationals sure. requiring robotic um, subservience. Mm. And the reason is this. If you're a multinational, you want to have consistency of your product. You can only have consistency of your product if you drown out any kind of dissent, if you drown out any kind of further development. So in other words, if you have, if you have uh, an employee in a, in a distant branch who says, actually, I'd like to do it like this because I think it could make it better or the source is better or the consistency of the burger is better, that to the multinational would be unacceptable because suddenly you have divergence of the product. And, and in fact, in terms of economic theory, it has been known for decades that once a company hits a size of a certain level, uh, it no longer comes up with new ideas. It no longer produces, um, it no longer has significant product development. And the only way it can make more money is by monopolization, which means increasing market share and further marketing. And, and the consequences? And, and go on. In terms of taking responsibility? Well, it, essentially, they, they, are, the they, they, they are doing the opposite. They, they are forcing themselves and, and manipulating people into buying the product. And they're taking the thinking out of the equation. They're taking the thinking out of the equation. You just literally for, arrive as a robot, you press four buttons on a screen, you give your credit card, and you have the but product. But for everyone, people working within it, yeah. again, are not thinking. If you're a smaller concern, you can do a bit of thinking. And I always remember... Um, an episode of Top Gear with Jeremy Clarkson mm. uh, when he was reviewing uh, one of the Suzuki cars. Do you remember the one that came out and the front looked just like the back? Um, I'm trying to remember which one that is now. Uh, I have to think but about you, it. But it, it probably comes to mind, doesn't yeah, it? And it was yeah, spectacularly yeah. ugly. And yet for a short period of time, we, yeah. had, we were seeing lots of them on the road. True. And And he looked at it and he said, this could only happen in a large multinational corporation. <laughs> he said, listen, if that, that's one of the advantages of having a smaller company like TVR. Like, the boss can wander, th wander through the factory, and if he saw drawings like this on, <laughs> in, on, on the planning stage, he would sack everyone responsible for it and then get on with it. Yeah, but it's about lifting... Uh, it's about, uh, again, you know, the example I used about uh, putting your head above the parapet... Uh, I've, as a car fan, I've had this conversation with you and a few of my friends on a regular basis about how everything looks the same. The moment someone comes out with something refreshing, I don't know, the Ionic 5, the Ionic 6, something a little bit different, people will go, whether you like it or not, will go, oh, that's different. Oh, that's, oh, that's refreshing. Somebody has taken the responsibility to maybe go out, take a chance, take a risk, go out of the mainstream Let's not offend anyone. Let's be very similar to the other manufacturers well, the, the, because that's what we think people want. Well, the trick with marketing yeah. is to make it look new and different, but not too different. If it's too different, people, as we said, they don't like it. So it needs to be familiar, but with a twist. Now, now, now let's put the, the, the cat amongst the pigeons and mention the subject that we have to be very careful with. Because we could go off on a very emotional and uh, passionate tangent. But taking responsibility and what we've just been through the last couple of years with COVID. And we were talking along, but just before this, we're having a little loose chat about it could happen again. And my concern would be about everybody being in that robotic stage and going, you know what? There hasn't been leadership for 30 years. This will do. I've been waiting for this for a generation. I will follow your, your fear tactics and do exactly what you... I've done it first time around. What would stop people doing the second time around? And you were telling me, actually, no, this time around, I think people would uh, rebel or would not conform or would be uh, would, would, would go against him. Was it Abraham I'm not... Lincoln? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said you can fool some of the people all the time. You can fool all of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all, all of the people, people all, all of the time. time. Yeah. 
And uh, recently there was, there was an article uh, in the Daily Mail online, and you can leave comments at the bottom of the articles. And one of the articles was about this apparent strain that was being reported on by, by um, uh, Niall Ferguson. Uh, the, who is the plenty of fish man who decided during lockdown that it was uh, so safe that he could go and sleep with women who met on plenty of fish and break lockdown. But to explain to people from other country, this is the uh, was the main one of the main advisors, scientists, advisor to the UK government who has made constant predictions. He about, was seen as the authority figure at the time before he literally dropped his trousers. Yes, uh, and who's 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 <laughs> modelled things on uh, BSE, who's modelled things on foot and mouth. Who's, who's been directly responsible for the death of millions of animals and found to be completely unnecessary. But if we take it back and to never take got it, a single modelling prediction right. My, my apologies. If we take it back to the uh, the topic of this podcast, is what again we've we've gone off on many occasions on a on a passionate tangent because we're both of a similar opinion um, in terms of uh, losing the, the the will or the ability to think during COVID when everybody yeah, was giving their think. marching orders. No, no, no. And that's the people thing. People don't like thinking because we're hardwired to respond to structure, hierarchy, leadership. That's why it was so easy and they did it as an experiment. By the way... So why is it that you and I psychops, didn't psychops. agree with it and were very often saying, can why can't the majority of people take a, one step back and realise what the hell is happening here? Because we're, we, we are the... The, the skewed extreme of original thinkers for whatever reason. Um, okay. and we, we can talk about what makes us skewed original thinkers on another podcast. Another podcast say. Um, but the, the but there's very few of that. Uh, very few of those. And it's, what's interesting is is uh, one. I remember talking about it with various people, including yourself, and everyone who'd come to the same conclusion that you and I, they would they would look at me and go, "You too." Because they, they, you know in your, you, you, you know deep down this is all nonsense. I nearly said the word. But, but, but it's, mm. it's so refreshing to see someone who's figured it out too. Because most people don't. Because most people, even if they have their suspicions, oh, will be sense. led. And the reason is the issue of cognitive dissonance. Because yes. the mind requires certainty. Mm -hmm. That's why religion is so powerful. Because it gives you certainty, actually. Um, but what happened to common sense and understanding no the difference between right and wrong? There is no common sense. We we are products of our environment because remember we make decisions emotionally. We respond to structure, hierarchy, leadership, mm. and through avoidance of fear. Mm. That's why the Nuremberg trials uh, re hit problems because what they decided mm. is that anybody can commit any atrocity given the wrong circumstances. There are books, the Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Sojanitsyn, who uh, was... Easy for you to say. Uh, indeed. Who, who was <laughs> one of the people who was responsible for the fall of the Soviet Union. And because he, he, as he was lying in agony in his prison cell, listening to the trusted prisoners, torturing other prisoners because there weren't enough guards to torture them, he said, Ooh, these prisoners who are just me, a version of me, they're torturing other people because they get a better deal. They get a few extra privileges. And then there was the, the book, Ordinary Men. And Ordinary Men was about Polish policemen. And at the beginning of the Second World War, the captain took this rather mature group of men. They weren't young, impressionable men. And he said, listen, I can see where this is going. Mm. And I'm telling you now, you are going to be asked to do dreadful things and if any of you walks away now, I will not hold it against you. And it was about these mm. mature middle-aged men who ended up taking pregnant women into fields and shooting them. Okay. Can I? Can I? I'm going to jump to to something maybe more more not trivial, but let's call it um, uh, a daily occurrence that I see more often than not. And I saw it on the plane that I was on the other day. I've seen it in uh, coffee bars, restaurants. Uh, it's not the it's not the first time I've seen this, where thirty years ago, thirty years ago, um, I'll give you an example. Having run restaurants, where something would happen, somebody we saw it. I think actually in the in the cafe this morning, but it was obviously a different example. It was a it was a literally an accident where that person tripped. But you see somebody fall down. I mean, I saw this 
uh, the other uh, yesterday, um, waiting half an hour on the bus mm -hmm. at Prague Airport in a non-air conditioned bus, and this middle-aged woman had to get off the bus because she was about to faint. Now I half so I was halfway to saying, "Are you okay?" Literally to go over there saying, "Anything I can do." M most apart from myself and one person didn't move, didn't move, and didn't flinch. Now. Taking responsibility also means, from a societal point of view, you want to check that that other human being is okay. Basic human instinct. You want to check that they're okay, they're doing well, and there's nothing okay. wrong. So let me. And that, for me, I still find that shocking. Okay. We need to. Even we... though we've been conditioned the last thirty yeah. years or so. so. Well, we need to distill this further. Then. Yes. So. But that's taking responsibility. The... Yeah, but what is taking responsibility? Mm. So. so Taking responsibility is is something core to what is defined as tribe compatible behavior. Remember, we're, we're tribal mm -hmm. and we are hardwired to respond to structure, hierarchy, leadership in order to make us tribe compatible. Uh, and this is one of the definitions of personality disorder, like mm -hmm. psychopaths, narcissists, borderlines. They are not tribe compatible. And therefore, when you do something... Mm -hmm. Taking responsibility for what you do means I'm looking at, I'm self-aware of what I could have done better and I will now take steps to make sure in future it will be done better. Mm. This is different to the concept of fault, which is pure punishment. So fault is not very helpful because it doesn't actually cause improvement. If it does, it's, my example, if, then, if it yeah. does, it's accidental. Mm. So your example is mm. is not really responsibility because unless what you're doing is you're taking responsibility for helping that woman fall no, down, no, which is different. It's a societal level. It's but surely a basic re it's a basic requirement to what, make sure what you described as tribe compatible behaviour. Okay. 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 So that's not necessarily because taking responsibility for what you're doing or what you've done is different to helping someone. So what you did is you collaborated and helped. That is tribe compatible. So we need to be very clear about oh, okay. our definition of responsibility. Okay, okay, okay. So responsibility is about improving on something you've done by being self-aware and then taking steps to improve it and taking ownership of it. Being punished is fault. And fault uh, will, will typically suppress progression. Uh, and, if, and if there's improvement, it's usually by accident. And being punished and, as you say, uh, fault itself uh, being attributed, it, I see it in organizations that I've been in. I see it in sometimes day-to-day -day life where I call it the stuffing has been knocked out of you. It reaches the point where you are spineless. You are scared and afraid to do anything because there will, you will either be ostracized on social media, you'll be vilified. Uh, it, it, it reaches the point where some, but most people say, you know what, it's not worth my bother. It's mm -hmm. not worth the bother because there's a risk element of being positive, of contributing, of trying to improve yeah. things. So therefore, the can positive. you imagine? So you're stifling all of that so the, just because you want to conform and be safe. So the good people, which I think is sad, the good original thinkers still, a lot of them will still choose to conform with nonsense. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, unless there's a, a, an insurrection or a revolution that they suddenly isn't stand that up. part of survival, though? That Being able to exactly. survive. Exactly. That, that is exactly right. So they conform, conform with nonsense because they're worried about the consequences. Um, so, but that's a different issue now. now versus and being a black sheep in, in, in some respects. The, the other thing to bear in mind is mm. that we need to spot the issue of people avoiding responsibility. So wherever you hear... Uh, this term, we are following the science <laughs> with <laughs> suppression of alternative points of views. You know that's a scam because there is no responsibility taking at all. Now, the only way that you get progress uh, in any kind of system is by making small tweaks to the system and seeing whether it works or if it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, you dump it and you try something else if it works you keep it and uh, there's a very interesting man who who started off as a notary and then started working in banks and looking at models and did modeling for companies and he eventually decided that 
what, however complicated and brilliant your model was, you could never produce a model that was accurate enough to assess the risks and profit of a company um, effectively. Uh, and he said, if you can't do it for a company, you certainly can't do it for an even more complicated system like an economy uh, or the health of a nation. Okay, So anybody who produces models, and in fact Nar Ferguson, not a single model of his has turned out to be correct. And yet the, the government abrogates all responsibility to the scientist who produces models. Then can I add to that? I'd like to know your opinion on this. Now that... I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm listening more to the media in, in the Czech Republic where I live, but now that we are now assessing what happened during COVID and more and more you're hearing opinions, I wouldn't call it even freedom of speech because we know that doesn't really exist, but it, it, there's a lot of opinions out there now. Media uh, channels are now saying, hang on a minute, do we need to uh, hold the politicians accountable for all the what we would call criminal or tr atrocities that have happened in terms of people losing their business, in terms of people having now ill health because of the vaccines, um, in terms of people mentally being scarred from this, um, is, you know, talking about taking responsibility, is there not enough of a movement of people in society to make that happen? Or is it because the whole system is the way it is that it will never happen? The you'll, consequences you'll never are see too that. great. The consequences are too great. There'll be, uh, if you, there'll be too much change required, mm. because everything mm. was was so fundamentally corrupt and wrong mm. that you'd have to change the whole system. And mm. the only way you can change mm. the whole system is with with a revolution. If you start again, uh, mm. when you start again, mm. and and in fact, that's what the central banks and the World Economic Forum and the WHO and the UN are trying to do. They're trying to restart the system by causing these these catastrophes so whether like it's to do a reset that's right whether it's SARS whether it's coronavirus whether it's climate change whether it's Ukraine whether it's the forthcoming r rather rapidly forthcoming economic catastrophe that's coming to the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. uh, that which people are still not looking at Blind. for instance you know the the, sec the the second stage of Brexit which means import tax on food and a 700 pound check per inspection cost on each crate is coming in in October. And the government who who are trying to take all the credit for the slight drop in inflation, and the only thing that's caused the slight drop in inflation, by the way, is, <laughs> is, is the interest rates, which are killing houses, but of course it's, it's actually putting people on the street. Which means people have got less disposable income. Yeah, that's right. So, so they're spending less. And, and of course no. the interesting thing is, the interesting thing mm, is, yeah, is if you... Uh, you see, the thing is, remember, we're talking about models and systems. We now know that it doesn't work. Mm. Central bankers tweaking the interest rates are going to have an opposite effect on what they think. For instance, if the rise in prices has been because of a supply chain problem mm. and you raise interest rates, then that's going to destroy the economy further. It's going to cause a economic collapse. In a In a... Slowly, as the it, supply chain is actually getting itself in, that's it. in order now. In, in, a, in a booming economy, mm -hmm. in a flowering, booming, blossoming economy, mm -hmm. where people are spending too much money because they have too much money, mm -hmm. um, then, then that, therefore the price of goods are going up because the supply is increased. Sure, maybe interest rates could have some kind of an effect, and even then you'd probably want to argue against it. But we know it doesn't work. It doesn't work, and it's yeah. going to have be catastrophic. And yet, people are saying we're following the rules in this case. So again, they're created abrogating responsibility. Who? who have created these? Well, who? Keynesian economics who, is, is what Who's they did. created these? Oh, okay. Keynesian yeah. economics. Mm -hmm. um, so the the now we're having a look at globalism. So if a large company uh, suppresses new ideas and creativity because it cannot be tolerated because it needs the corporate identity and structure and mm -hmm. consistency of product. Mm -hmm. And of course, by the way, there is always a, a sine wave uh, lifespan to any kind of entity, including a large company. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, it starts slowly, accelerates exponentially, tails off and then drops because there's no more new ideas. And so there's the new idea company coming up. 
So rest assured that Google and Amazon will be distant spots on the horizon at some point in the future. But is it not a um, catch-22 that globalization has in fact um, assisted, but again, catch-22 because people want it or allow it to happen? That actually they, they think it's a good thing, but think it's a good thing, but actually is what is done is thwarted the taking responsibility for your own thoughts, being a free thinker, because you know you well, people are, are crap at that anyway. So let's yes. not worry too much about that. But well, I think it's got. Uh, I think it's it's worse than over the years. Is my point. It, well, indeed, because the robotic, we're being uh, forced. You made. That's right. We're being forced to be become more robots mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we need to comply more because everyone needs to be controlled in the in a global economy you can only have a global economy by forcing uniformity on everyone do you think most people realize they're being controlled no uh, well slowly slowly they are you think covid sort of uh, highlighted that in a way well there was as i said the uh, the article on the daily mail yeah. and if you looked at the thousands of comments underneath it mm. there wasn't a single positive comment everyone mm. was going i've had enough this is nonsense uh, you want to try it on me you, People have had enough, and that's why they're trying new things like Ukraine. You know, they'll test the waters sometimes and just see how much fear factor they get. See the tolerance levels. That's yeah. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what they do. The, the powers that be are, are cautious. You know, they'll tr- they'll tweak the knobs. They'll try something. Oh, that didn't work. We'll try something else. Um, but also, I think taking responsibility. I would like to add the word leadership to that as well. Well, there's no leadership. Well, well, but, that, but that's my point because, it, in its truest definition. A leader is someone who takes responsibility, has been voted in as the person that is the captain of the ship, will make certain decisions. Yes, so this is, we still pass by the majority voting of the board, but generally that CEO is hired for his experience or her experience for running a company, for making it profitable, for ensuring that they've got the right culture and so on. And now even that CEO has to be so politically tuned in and politically literate that actually all you're doing is playing a communication PR okay, so game. So let's look at let's look at the next thing. So because I'm talking about pure leadership, that that for me has okay. been affected, of course, because the, because in, in people, its truest form. Because because er, there's people have taken away the concept of responsibility and just produced fault. Because fault is fear. Fear causes compliance. But the point I'm making before is in, maybe I don't know how far back we, we need to go. But a, a a good CEO that you know is uh, is um, they lead is is leading. But uh, I'm talking about the, the the how how you how you can define that. You know that they are popular within the company, popular within the markets. So if they're a pu- uh, publicly listed company, they're delivering to the shareholders. They're doing the fundamental, the four or five fundamental things for them to be deemed as being worthy and successful. Now. Now, look at the examples with uh, the examples in the media right now as we speak. Again, r- trial by media, where the CEO is as good as his last press release in the social media. Because if a social media decided you need to go yeah. because we believe what you've done is, in inverted commas, wrong, yeah. who defines okay. what right and so wrong okay, is? Okay, so let's not complicate yeah. it. All it is is global compliance. Yes. That's it. So... So yeah, but the fact that you're a chief executive doesn't matter. officer you're, you're just means an very little. Yeah, exactly. You're an ant. Yeah, and that that is the problem. Um, you remove responsibility with fault, and yeah. and now there's the term virtue signalling. Now the do you want to explain is, that for the, the virtue signalling is is simply hmm. saying um, I've done this. I'm wearing a mask, so I'm I've I put no effort into it. But aren't I a good citizen because I'm wearing a mask? Okay. Or I'm transgender. Who look at me? I have. I am now entitled. Well, are you? You haven't put any effort into it, have you? So it's 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 the difference between. Well, I've also given a talk on internet gaming versus social media. Now, that what one of the crucial differences is that at least in internet gaming, you've got to put effort in and and train and try, right? With social media, you get all the likes. And you expect the likes uh, for no effort, zero effort. That's entitlement. And, of course, you know that the millennials have been grown up entitled. Now, entitlement means zero responsibility. Transgender equals zero responsibility. But, in my humble opinion, what social media is, is, uh, is advocating, what it's putting out there, for me is still for a minority 
of people. Most people that I will speak to and have spoken to, let's call it in general Joe public, different generations, especially the older generation, will lead what you would call a reasonably balanced life. Yeah, with but that's the minority, seriously. Okay. The, the, okay. The, uh, the, unfortunately, it's it going the, the bigger picture way. Because of the younger generation. Can, yeah. You can see what's happening. Yeah. But So there are very few people that will talk like you and I that have the insight and the understanding and the common sense and the ability to take responsibility based on the common sense and understanding. Because mm -hmm. everyone can take responsibility. But, but it's easy have, not to. They don't have the sense and well, it's, it's much easier, easier because, not to. because responsibility means thinking and people don't like thinking. But isn't it they easier like just to click two or three buttons and get it delivered? You don't have to. Correct. Meaning, we're talking about debt. Yeah? Correct. So we're taking responsibility also works on a financial level. Mm. And what I find amazing is the people that are, let's say, the poorest, the ones that are in the most debt, are the ones taking the least responsibility. Of for their situation, course, because so, that's, that's so, where the so government wants takeaway it. meals, the okay. the eBay click, the Amazon click, the I'm going to order another one of these yeah, because but, I want one. But that's where the powers that be want us. Oh, the why yeah. is not in question. I'm talking about the yeah, the, but that's the, 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 the who. Humans. You can you can predict what humans are going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily, very predictable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And and of course, the concept of psychops, by the way, is is uh, is defined as a military weapon. Mm. So. The UK government is using a military weapon against its own population. Think about that for a second. Do you want to elaborate a bit more on that? So, well, psychops is how we were manipulated. Uh, the kind of things that we could be told, such as killing your granny, for instance. Um, that's psychops. And that is okay. classified officially as a military weapon. Right? Wow. Okay, so I didn't realise that. Going back to LGBT okay. and, and uh, virtue signalling... Uh, it also means that as a as a male, it is your fault that you're male. Hmm? Don't be a man. And uh, women... Don't you be can responsible for being a mother. Don't be responsible <laughs> for being a, a woman. Uh, you can virtue signal instead by sleeping with lots of men and going to work and having a career. Um, and, of course, women do. A few of the better thinkers will go, ooh... Well, well, what do we do? In fact, there's uh, the film Barbie with... Uh, what's, what's that actress's name? I anyway, don't know. I don't know. the... Um, I won't see... I won't she, go and watch it. It's, it's a, a very... Well, it's been a very popular film and a very successful film. One of the most popular films film. of all time, yeah. Um, now, Margot Robbie. Now, the, the main message of that film is lost on most people. Right. But essentially, in this ideal world of Ken and Barbie, um, everything's perfect. Uh, Ken doesn't quite get Barbie because she's busy being perfect and doing what she wants uh, and p uh, partying with her friends, um, but they don't have any genitalia. And she eventually <laughs> decides that she wants to become human. Oh my God. And the final part of the film mm. is uh, once she decided to become human, is mm. she's off to see her gynecologist. In other words, she's decided that... The, she wants to become human to have children. Okay? So? Well, that's the point of life, right? So yeah, the, yeah. the lady who had um, yeah. the opportunity for zero responsibility, endless partying, um, and a man doting on her who she didn't really care much mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. has, has decided that the point of life is to have kids. So and how do we wrap this up? How do we conclude this? Well, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the other answer is this. If you look at... What one of the ancient Greek philosophers Socrates, who uh, his student Plato uh, produced a symposium of love, uh, and what it was, it was a group of people who, uh, because they were quite jaded from their partying the night before, they decided to drink less and instead have an intellectual conversation on what love is. And each person produced a really interesting talk. One of them, for instance, said, "You love that which you don't have." In other words, opposite attracts. Another person talked about the the ancient legend that that humans used to exist uh, fused down the back. So we used to have two heads, uh, four arms, four legs, and we used to travel with cartwheels around the world, very fast, very powerful. But at one point, we overstepped our boundaries, and Zeus got pissed off with us and punished us by cleaving us down the back with his finger and a thunderbolt. So now that's why we have one head and two arms and two legs. And it was only his wife, Ira, who's being a, an affable, agreeable lady, who says, oh, Zeus, Zeus, not again, because he was just about to cleave us a second time, otherwise you'll all be hopping on one arm and one leg. Mm. 
Um, and therefore, that's the legend of how we go around the world seeking our other half. And it also, interestingly, allows for same-sex other halves. Anyway, Socrates comes in and he says... Well, interesting enough, I went to the Oracle of Delphi and the high priestess, the Amita, told me what love is. And they said, wow, what is it, Socrates? And he said, love is you, the pursuit of immortality. And the way you achieve that is you either seek to mark the pages of history, cure a cancer, uh, saving uh, a country from a, a, a warring nation like Churchill. Uh, but most of us settle for reproduction. And, of course, the big joke was that it was the only fear of Socrates that wasn't his own, and he had to be told by a woman what love was. Mm -hmm. We are here to reproduce. And, in fact, what's happening now is the opposite. People are not taking responsibility for their own sex. Right now, the birth rate in the UK is 20% less than the death rate. In Norway, adult diapers are outselling kiddie diapers, mm. Right. If you are a woman who goes to university, you have a 50% chance of hitting your 40s childless. So what are we saying? That taking responsibility means... For who you are. Thank you. And taking steps to improve yourself for who you are on a daily basis. Well, on that note... <laughs> Never... And not comparing what? No, yourself... No, maybe not. Or not comparing <laughs> yourself to others, i.e. social media. Oh, Just God. look at yourself and every day improve yourself by little step based on who you are and take a step back and cut out the noise cut out the noise on that note thank you very much thank you people I look forward to speaking to you soon likewise take care bye bye, -bye.